Hello, my people. Miss Mac here. Let's begin yoga class sitting down, please. <sighs> Make yourself comfy and cozy. Take a nice big breath in. And out. See if you can make yourself yawn. Take a big breath in. And then do one humming breath. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out a long HM sound. The higher you start, the better. Breathe in. Check out how you are feeling right now, this very moment. Are you grumpy? Are you energetic? Are you happy? Check out how you're feeling. And we are doing chair yoga today. Um, I'm not sure what kind of space you will be in. This will work if you're at home on a couch. This will work if you are at school, at a desk, whatever. Any kind of chair will do. So come to seated, uh, seated on a chair and loop your shoulders backward. The bigger, the better. Roll your shoulders forward. Lift your shoulders up to your ears. Drop, drop, drop them. One more of those we lift. We lower. Drop one hand, stretch it up, 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 and over. And your bottom hand can do whatever you want. It can stay on your leg like this. It can hold on to your chair, whatever. This is Ardha Chandrasana A, your half moon pose. And then go the other way, up, 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 and over. Reach through the tips of your fingers. Ooh, my neck cracked. <sighs> and breathe. Reach your arms overhead, Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute. Bring your hands together. Hold hands with yourself and flip your palms. If it feels good, you can tuck your chin so your neck gets a little stretched too. If that makes you feel squished, you don't have to do that part. Let's do that whole shebang over again. We reach up and over. It's half moon time. <sighs> half moon the other way. Upward salute, palms together, hold hands, press your palms. You can tuck your chin if you want, you don't have to. And I have found the most positively wonderful newspaper article. Everybody take out your newspaper, puff your chest forward as you look up at a phenomenal article that you're very interested in. And then close your newspaper, tuck your chin. Do it again, read the article, look up, 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 up. Bend your back. Close the newspaper, look down. Two more of those, we breathe in. And out. One more, my dudes, we breathe in. And out. sit up tall. I think our lower half needs a little bit of attention now. Pick up one leg and roll your ankle. Try to spread your toes apart. Roll your ankle the other way. Point and flex your foot. Make your toes go up and down. And just give it a shake. Nothing fancy. Just shake. And put it down. To our other side, pick it up. This is a really good thing to do if you ever feel like bored in one of your classes or cranky or you can't focus. Nobody will see this underneath your desk or if you're um, in the classroom virtually and it will likely help you focus a little bit more. Also, it just feels good. Point and flex. And shake a shake a shake -a. Let's march, my dudes. Your hands can be wherever is comfortable. I think I'm gonna leave mine on my legs. You can be holding your chair if you feel wobbly in a way that you don't like. We'll just pick up our leg and then the other. 
You are welcome to go faster or slower than me. This is the tempo or the timing that I'm enjoying, but you pick the timing that works for you as long as you're doing it. Let's do eight more of these. Choose a side and lift your leg. Lift it a little bit closer. If you're at a desk, you might have to kind of finagle so that it fits, but you know, do your best. Let's roll our ankles one more time. This is Ekaplata Tadasana, or one-legged mountain. And then do the other side, pick your leg up. Roll. Ekaplata Tadasana. Put it down. Roll, what? Roll back one shoulder and then the other. Change direction. Lift both shoulders to your ears. Drop a drop a drop a. Extend one foot forward. Reach through your knee, reach through your ankle, reach through your toes. If you kind of just do this, it's, it's, it's not gonna feel good. So instead, like you're planting your heel into the ground. And this might already feel like a stretch in the back of your leg. This already feels like a stretch to me. You could stay exactly here. If this is all you wanna do, you have permission to just stay here. If you want to forward fold, maybe you have a desk in front of you, you could leave your, uh, lean your head on. Or if you have room and it's safe in the kind of chair you're on, you can just fold over your leg. So this is fine and this is fine as well. It's your choice. I'm going to challenge you to stay in this stretch for about two more breaths. Roll it up, 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 up. Oh, and let's switch a route. Take your other leg long. Make sure that it is lengthened. I am parking my heel right into the floor rather than just, right? And then you decide, do you want to stay lifted on this side or do you want to fold forward? That is entirely up to you. Either way, we want to keep our breath moving. We want to stay feeling relaxed. Let's take one more breath. Roll it up. And it's pigeon time. Pick a side, it doesn't matter which. Park your ankle on your knee. And this is already pigeon pose. You could stay exactly here. If you wanted, you could gently press down on your knee. Or if you wanted, you could fold forward again. So choose any of these options. Number one, number two, or number three. They're all correct. You do what you enjoy. Do what feels best to you. Stay in this pose. I'm going to check the time. Super duper. <sighs> and we switch through my pals. Plant that foot. Find your pigeon pose. You want to stay just like this. You want to gently press down on your knee, or do you want to fold forward? Do what you enjoy. Slowly roll up, 
Place both feet on the floor. Be pretty far forward so that you can let your knees go from side to side. I'm in a swivelly chair so it's extra easy for me, but just let your, let your knees relax in one direction and then the other. And let's twist. So feet stay planted into the ground. You might have to scoot pretty far forward in your chair to make that happen. And then grab something. That, if there's a desk, you could grab that. You could grab onto your leg. And then you're just looking behind yourself to twist. Twist the other way, same thing. Grab whatever is handy. If your neck feels uncomfortable, that probably means you're looking too far backward. So look to the side instead. Hmm. Come to the middle. We're gonna fold forward. So you have a couple of choices here. Um, I love how forward folds feel for my body, so I do them a lot. But sometimes, especially my kids, will tell me that it kind of bothers their back and we don't want yoga to ever feel painful. Um, we wanna just be challenged instead. We, want, we don't want like discomfort. So if you want a very small back bend, you could just park your elbows on your thighs or if there's a desk in front of you and let your head hang, and this could be it. Or you could go a little bit farther and just fold forward. Or you could have your legs extended in front of you and fold forward. That doesn't feel really safe in a swivelly chair, so I'm gonna do this. So you choose any of those three options that work for you. And we're just gonna breathe into this stretch. One more breath. Roll up. And then our last uh, chair pose is going to be a back bend. And this will be different depending on what kind of chair you are using. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see me a little bit better. So our back bend goal is to just be as like spread out as possible. So I have space to just let my arms dangle, let my neck dangle. <sighs> if you're at home on like a couch or a sofa, this could probably be very restful. If you're in a desk, just do what you need to do to make sure your, your neck is comfortable. We're trying to just take up maximum space. If you do not like how it feels to drop your head back, you don't have to. You can look forward instead. One more breath. To get out of this safely and comfortably, grab onto your chair, look forward, and then use your core, your tummy muscles to sit up. And sit up tall and bring your focus back to me. Park your hands on your lap with your palms up. Connect your thumb to your uh, index finger. Thumb to your middle finger. Thumb to your ring finger. Thumb to your pinky. Stay in your chair. I'm gonna come closer so you can see. So it looks like this. One, two, three, Four with both hands. One, two, three, four. And then internally, so meaning like just in our head or silently, we can chant. Peace begins with me. Say it in your head. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with 
me. Breathe in. And out. We have reached the 15 minute mark. That means it's time to pause the video. I hope that you are feeling peaceful and restful. Next time I see you, we are doing power yoga. See you soon. Oh, hello. I'm so glad you're back. Last time I saw you, we explored chair yoga. So we held poses for quite a long time. We didn't do any standing. And we explored a new chant, which we're gonna circle back to later. But right now, let's get a little bit rowdy. Let's do some, let's do some power yoga. Um, if you have the option, scoot your chair out of the way. If you are between desks, uh, that is no problem. We'll just finagle our space to make sure that we are uh, safe. Hang on one second, there we go. Good heavens. So for power yoga, let's stand with our feet right underneath our hips. Reach your fingers toward the floor, take a big breath in. Breathe out. One more of those, my pals. We inhale and exhale. Reach your arms up over your head. Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute. And exhale, sit in a chair, Utkatasana, chair pose. I'm just, you're fine. I'm just stepping back so you can see me better. Let's flow between those two. As we inhale, we lift hands overhead. As we exhale, we bring hands back to ourself. It is okay to go faster or slower than me as long as you are doing all of the movement. Take two more of these. Next time you're in your chair, stay there in your chair pose. Stay here in Utkatasana. Bend your knees more. See if you can pick your toes up off the floor. Reach your arms over your head as you straighten your knees. And pick up one leg. Ekapada Tadasana, one-legged mountain. Take a breath, my pals. Drop your arms, drop your leg. Other side, pick up your leg and your arms at the same time for Ekapada Tadasana. And this time, drop just your foot. Let's do standing crunches. So you'll cross the midline. My elbow is coming toward my knee. My elbow is coming toward my knee. I have very short arms compared to the rest of my body. So my elbow and knee do not quite connect and that is okay. Yours might. Guess what, you can go faster or slower than me. Let's do four more. Arms overhead, we take up lots of space in our upward salutes. And palms together. Drop your arms, let's shake one foot. Shake the other foot. Shake a little higher and your other leg too. <sighs> Come back to mountain pose, Tadasana. Pressing the palms together and find tree pose, Rikshasana. It is your choice if you keep your toes on the floor, lift it up to your calf or your thigh. Lift your arms over your head as if you've just grown branches. And then your foot swings behind for warrior. I'm gonna turn sideways. You can stay facing the way that you are. So this knee is super duper bent. It looks like a surfer, absolutely. So if you want to wiggle and wobble, that's absolutely fine with me. Flip one hand, stretch far to the side. Straighten your knee as you come up and back. This is called Sky Archer. Your bottom arm can just dangle. Your head can just dangle. We're hanging out here. Go back to warrior two. Stretch far, far, far to the side. Park your elbow on your thigh. And it's up to you whether your hand is on your hip 
or overhead, whichever is more comfortable. This is extended side angle. Big, big transition. You'll place your hands on the floor and my back heel comes up. So if you look like you're about to run a race, then you are doing it right. This is Anjane Asana or runner's lunge. We have a balance challenge here, my pals. Be mindful of any bodies that are around you. Be mindful of any furniture that is around you because we are about to pick up our tail any amount. You could, as I'm doing right now, just pick up your foot a smidge. You could pick it up super duper high, up to you. And then park your foot back down. So you wind up in a forward fold. Utanasana. Bend your knees a lot, a lot. As you roll up. And then do what you need to do to be comfortable and ready for the second side. <sighs> Take a big breath. If you need to adjust your clothing at all, feel free. Oh, it's so much work. All right, here we go. Second side, my pals. <sighs> Power yoga. Park your feet underneath your hips. Stretch your fingers down and check out how you're feeling. Do you feel energized, focused? distracted, happy, excited, what, whatever. Any answer is fine. Just notice how you're feeling. Hmm. Palms come together. Knee turns out to the side. I think I want my foot on my calf again. Your foot could be higher or lower. Reach your branches overhead. And we swing back, back, back into warrior two. So you will look like this. You'll be standing sideways. I want you to stay like this and I'm just turning so you can see my body better. You don't have to turn. So when you sit so very bent, if you must wobble, then you must. It's very appealing, I understand. Flip your hand, stretch to the side. I mean stretch a lot. And then straighten your knee as you come up, 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 and back, back, back. Back to warrior two. Stretch to the side. The elbow, it comes to the thigh. What do you want for your top hand? Hand on your hip or overhead? Look at how high my hip is. Instead, if I drop low, this becomes more powerful and more comfortable. And then here's our big transition. Our heel comes up and we're facing the side for Anjane Asana, runner's lunge. I'm gonna hop back a little bit so that you can see the transition. <sighs> Hang out in Anjane Asana. Walk your hands forward, walk your foot, and then lift your foot any amount. It can be just a little tiny smidge or it can be so, so much. That's your choice. You can do it. You can do it. And then bring your foot down. And we're folded forward in Uttanasana, forward fold. <sighs> Try to be really relaxed here, my pals. Have your knees so very bent. We're not looking forward. That's going to be too much work for our neck. Instead, we want it to be hanging. And come up halfway to monkey pose. Ardha Uttanasana. I'll step back. So your body looks like a capital L. And fold back down. And come up halfway. Reach your fingertips in front of you so your elbows are alongside your ears. Oh, this is so much work. Take one more breath. Oh, and drop down. Have a seat and come talk to me. Oh, beautiful work. I notice that I feel so different whether I'm doing gentle or power yoga. 
I feel much more energized now. Just take a second to think about if you preferred chair yoga or power yoga. Did you like one more than the other and why? Just think about it for a sec. I've got my Hoberman sphere today. Um, let's just take a couple of breaths with the Hoberman sphere. As I expand the Hoberman sphere, breathe in. And as this breathing ball shrinks, breathe out. Here we go. One more big breath with the Hoberman sphere. Now that we've explored a bunch of um, power poses together, I would like you to create your own. So a uh, power pose is something that takes up lots of space, meaning you're reaching some part of your body as far as it will go. And a power pose also usually has some kind of challenge involved. So maybe it's on one foot or maybe uh, you really have to think about it in some way. So I am going to set a minute and a half for everyone to come up with their own power pose. You are not obligated to share if you don't feel comfortable, but I do need everyone to come up with their own personal power pose. Go. You have a minute and a half. You can do it. Yoga poses can be named after anything. You could think of an animal that seems very powerful to you. You could think of, oh, maybe a career that involves a lot of power, a job that is powerful. If you finished your power pose very fast, you're welcome to make up another one while other people are still working. Everybody has about 30 seconds left. And in our final moments, is there any way you could make your power pose a little fancier, a little more complicated. Is it possible to turn it into a twist or a balance? Is it possible to make the arms a little more complex? And pause in your power pose. Breathe. If you haven't thought of a name already for your power pose, try to do so now. What would you call this? You can call it anything you want. And let it go. And come sit down. Wonderful. Thank you for creating as always. Oh, I wish I could see them because I bet they were amazing. From seated, let's take a breath in as we squeeze our fist tight. Breathe out as you open your hands. Do that again, we breathe in. And out. One more, inhale. And exhale. So far we have explored a pretty gentle chair yoga and some power yoga uh, together in this video. We have once again, once again, reached a 15 minute mark. That means it is time to pause, more movement, more breathing and more creating when you come back. See you soon. Oh, hello, so glad you're back. Last time I saw you, the yoga we explored was, I think, pretty physically challenging and pretty athletic. 
So let's switch back to a little more gentle yoga now. We started in our chair, but instead let's come to the floor. So come transition to the floor, please. Hmm. If you are in a room where being on the floor super does not work, you can change these poses to being in a chair as well. That is fine. We just, we work with what we have. So we'll start cross-legged. And hopefully our backs are feeling very warmed up. So we'll walk forward to a forward fold. You do not need to go far. <sighs> Let's breathe in our forward fold. Relax your neck, nod your head, yes. And shake your head, no. <sighs> Staying folded forward, walk it over to one side so that your nose is dripping uh, over toward your knee. And try to keep your, your whole self on the floor. We don't want to rock up like this. That's going to feel terrible. Instead, we want to be kersplunked onto the floor. <sighs> Roll it up, up, up. Put the bottoms of your feet together, Baddha Konasana. Bring it pretty close to you. Place your hands underneath your ankles. And then use your strong tum tum muscles to lift your feet off of the floor. Try to sit up really tall, proud chest. This is flower pose. If you want, you could pick up your feet a little bit higher. One more breath. And then come to cross-legged with your funky leg in front, the one that you don't normally put in front. And walk forward again. Find your forward fold. <sighs> Stay low, low, low as you walk to your other side. So the one that you didn't stretch on before. Roll it up. Place the bottoms of your feet together. And this time, hold on to the tops of your ankles and sit up really tall in Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. Sometimes this is called cobbler pose. Do you know what a cobbler is, like for a job? It's like a shoemaker. So I think that's a funny idea. This is shoemaker pose. And okay, this is silly. I'm gonna ask you just to be a little ridiculous with me for a moment. We're just gonna rock from side to side. And I think it feels good to be rocking so far that it feels like you're gonna fall over. I, in fact, you might topple over once or twice and that's fine. In fact, it's kind of fun. Let's do uh, four more big rocks. One, two, three, and four. Come back to the middle. Park your hand and we'll come up and over for a side stretch. Ooh. That's so much work for my hips when I do it like this. <sighs> and stretch the other way, my pals. I should do this more often. Oh, this feels great. And come up tall. Let's do a few more chill uh, shapes. Let's put our legs out long in front of us. And just wiggle your legs. Oh. It feels good. I'm a big fan of this. Oh, and freeze. Flex your toes. So have your toes like coming back towards you. Sit up nice and tall. And then just walk your hands as far forward as is both comfortable and challenging. We want both. So I'm grabbing onto my toes, but you could go farther or closer. Whatever, as long as you're folding forward. We'll bow our head. I like to rock side to side. I think that feels nice. You don't have to rock if you don't want to. This is called Pashimotanasana, which I think is outrageously fun to say. 
Please say, Pashi Mota Nasa Na. Say it like you're shocked. Pashi Mota Nasa Na? <laughs> We're going to hang out here for a little bit longer because I think it feels better if we wait. Roll it up. Tuck your legs underneath you. This is Virasana, our hero pose. And I have a little bit of a hurt foot. So you could stay like this. That's, this is not working for me right now, so I'm going to go like this. They're both correct. Your booty could be down or it could be lifted. Either way, let's lateral bend. Stretch up and over. It is going to feel dreadful if you lateral bend like this. Oh, my shoulders are so mad at me right now. So instead, totally sideways. Yes. Other way, my dudes. Each side one more time. I do love a lateral bend. Last one. And then whether you are lifted like Miss Mac or lowered sitting on your feet, let's gently nod our head yes. It's, it's your choice how fast or slow you go, but it's feeling really nice to me to go very slowly right now. So I recommend at least trying that. And shake your head no, absolutely not, not happening. And then tilt your head. Well, I really don't know, haven't the foggiest. Roll your head, make a big circle. Make a big circle the other way. And our last pose for now is Ustrasana. Please say that out loud, Ustrasana. That translates to camel pose. So um, if you're not already like I am, meet me here. So I'm perched up on my knees. Place your hands on your hips, but then hide your bows, put the elbows behind you. Take chest forward and take gaze up. So if I were turned sideways, I would look like this. I personally do not have a very flexible back. So this is, this is plenty, plenty stretch for me. Your stretch could be very small. It could be bigger than mine. As long as you are making safe, comfortable choices for your body, great. Face leads as I come out, so I'm looking forward. You still don't have to turn, I'm just sideways so you can see the back bend, you're fine. Let's do Ustrasana one more time. So um, important that our elbows go back. If they're out to the side, this, it won't feel good. So hide your elbows behind you, chest forward, gaze up, and breathe in Ustrasana, camel pose. Hmm. Take one more breath. Face leads as you come out. And then make your way to any comfortable seated position. <sighs> Whatever that might be like for you is perfectly fine. Super. So earlier in this video, we were exploring this, well, it's kind of a mudra. Flip your hands so your palms are up. And make sure your body is comfortable. So the way that you're sitting, is it a way that you could comfortably sit for a couple of minutes? And then do this with me, just the fingers first. We connect all the way through. Let it go for a second. Um, the chant that goes with this is Satanama. And those are not Sanskrit words, they are just sounds. So when this chant was made up, this chant is hundreds of years old, people chose the sounds Satanama because they thought they were really beautiful and really satisfying. So if you're comfortable saying it out loud, I really encourage you to say it out loud. I think it feels great. If you're not comfortable saying it out loud, say it in your head. Just follow along with me in your head. It goes like this. Sa-ta-na. 
ma sa ta na 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 ma last one sa ta na ma so that was those original just those nonsense sounds or another way of thinking of it is peace begins with me so same thing if you're comfortable saying it out loud i would love for you to i think it feels great or you can just say it in your head either is okay close your eyes if that's comfortable here we go peace begins with me 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 breathe in make a fist breathe out open your hands Let's take a Shavasana. So take a moment to uh, make your body as comfortable as is possible. If in the room you're in, you can comfortably lay on the floor, you're invited to do so. If you can't really lay on the floor where you are or you're just not comfortable doing that, then make yourself really comfy in your chair. I'm gonna pause for a second to make sure everybody is as comf and as coz as possible. And then when you are there, reminder that Shavasana doesn't involve stretching or exercise. Shavasana doesn't involve memorizing anything or creating anything new. The whole point of Shavasana is just to rest. Take a nice deep breath in. Eyes can close if that is comfortable for you. And I want you to imagine that it's a wonderful summer night. I want you to imagine that you are sitting or laying on soft green grass. Imagine that there is a beautiful summer breeze helping you to feel relaxed and content. Imagine it's a dark night, but the sky is so full of stars. Imagine you're sitting on this soft green grass and above you, countless stars are twinkling as the soft breeze blows by. Enjoy a yoga nap on this beautiful pretend summer night. Good night. Staying just as you are, take a breath. Gently move your fingers, hands, or wrists. Without making noise, gently move your toes, feet, or ankles.
Wake up from your yoga nap and stretch. Sit up if you're not already and bring your attention to me. We got a lot covered today in this video. I hope you enjoyed this practice. I enjoyed yoga-ing with you and I'll see you again next time. Ciao.